We're going to Elkhart, Indiana, RV capital of the world. A reservation is not until tomorrow, so the plan is to stay at a harvest host along the way and then visit the mothership. We also plan to revisit the RVMH Hall of Fame and then continue the journey south. Some things may not go as planned, but sometimes that's just the way it is. May the journey begin. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Guys, I'm free in my RV. Yeah. We're leaving pretty early on this Sunday morning, and our first stop is going to be the dump station because the plan is to stay at a harvest host tonight. We've made a reservation online, and even though they haven't responded yet, we hope they will before we arrive. Otherwise, we'll call. We don't really have a very long drive today to Warner Vineyards in Papa, about two and a half hours. Not the most scenic drive through central Michigan, but it is such a beautiful day and such pristine countryside. Eventually, we make it to our exit, Papa, Michigan. And we call the harvest host because they never responded either approving or denying our stay. Some of them are like that. And when we call, the person who answered the phone said, Sure, come in, come hungry. Uh, which we are, actually. And here we are, but I don't see anywhere to park. So we called again. And apparently, they're having a special event, so the parking lot is gonna be full, and whoever answered the phone earlier didn't know what they were talking about. It is not the first time this happens, and today we don't really have a plan B, so let's park at the nearby Walmart and regroup. Well, it turns out we're only an hour away from Elkhart, so we're just gonna continue. And I'm sure we'll find somewhere to stay at the RV capital of the USA. We are now in Indiana and Elkhart, and there's an RV park here on the right with my name on it. But first, we're famished, and I've never been to Texas Roadhouse, which was actually founded in Clarksville, Indiana, so let's eat. I forgot to film in there, but wait, believe it or not, this was my first time at Texas Roadhouse, and let me tell you, this is my new favorite place. Oh, that was so good. Anyway, um, now, by, by the way, I believe it is an Indiana company, originally. Um, there's Minitini. We're gonna find somewhere to, to spend the night here at the RV capital of the world. Well, as we were driving into the Texas Roadhouse, we saw on the right-hand side, this RV park seems to be brand new, part of the, the Garden Inn over there. Maybe a little steep at $56 for the night. And their credit card machine was broken, so they were only accepting cash. I'm glad I had cash on me. But, I mean, you're smack in the middle of downtown Elkhart, a bunch of restaurants, walking distance. So, you know, it's, it's a good location. And um, changing the subject, I am one disappointment away from canceling my Harvest Host account. Lately, it's been nothing but failures. Anyway, we're not going to do much. I think we're just going to spend the rest of the day working, at least me. And, and, um, and this is the thing. We're in, in, on Wednesday, we're taking Minitini 4 to the mothership so they can, you know, get some repairs done on certain things. And, um, and then, you know, since we're going to be homeless for a couple of hours, we might explore El Elkhart a little bit, but not today. See you tomorrow. Of course, the main reason I came here was for the open house and to show you some new Winnebago units, but you already saw that. And if you didn't, I'll put a link somewhere. This video is sponsored by RVmattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. 
RVMattress.com is a Brooklyn bedding brand known for top-of-the-line comfort and quality. Plus, they have a factory in Arizona and they ship conveniently to you for free anywhere in the United States. They offer different firmness options and heights, dimensions, even RV-specific and non-traditional sizes to fit right into your lifestyle. When you're searching for a replacement RV mattress, well, first it's got to fit, right? And then it's got to be comfortable. Well, look no more. Here we have a short queen 60x74 in Mini Tini 4, which happens to be one of those non-standard sizes. We've had this signature hybrid firm with the Glaciotex cooling pillow top for quite a few months now and it fits perfectly and it is so much more comfortable than the stock mattress. It is very easy to buy online, free shipping, it comes right up to your doorstep, vacuum sealed, rolled up inside a box and even though our trailer is tiny it was still super easy to get it on the bed and unroll it. It is actually a sight to behold, once you break the vacuum, it just inflates in a matter of seconds. Really, really cool. As I said, Brooklyn Bedding owns its own manufacturing facility in Arizona, so they are able to ensure that the entire facility is free of fiberglass, which is very important. And they are able to use premium materials at a reasonable price, with no middleman bringing up the cost. They even offer a 120-night slip trial and a 10-year warranty. <laughs> we love our RB mattress by Brooklyn Bedding and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out rvmattress.com. You can click the link below or scan the QR code or just go to rvmattress.com slash travelingrobert and get 25% off your mattress with code travelingrobert. And that way you'll also help support our channel. Well, good morning from the RV capital of the world. I was going to say it's a beautiful morning, but it really isn't. It is kind of cloudy and gloomy. But uh, we're going to start our morning here at the Rice and Roll Bakery. They're famous for the donuts. Yeah, donuts make me happy. Mm. And the roll with sausage gravy. I'm sure the roll is down there somewhere. The RV and MH Museum is a must-visit place here in Elkhart. If you are an RV enthusiast like we are, there's no other place in Elkhart like the RV and Motorhome Museum. The Hall of Fame, if you will. It's, we've been here before, but it's been a while. All right, everybody, come on in. We're getting ready to go on a covered wagon expedition. I must say we're visiting at a bad time of the year. Since it is open house week, most of the areas that would normally be allocated to the museum, they're using them for open house. But anyway, here's a 1929 covered wagon. It was the first production travel trailer. This is very, very cool and I like the presentation a lot. Next, we have a 1934 Schultz house trailer, manufactured here in Elkhart. This one is starting to look a little more to what we're used to nowadays. Now we have a much larger one, a 1955 Spartan Imperial Mansion. Odd to see the words Spartan and Imperial in the same sentence. It definitely looks like 1955 in here. Residential fridge. Residential oven. Bunk beds. Ooh, telephone. Bathtub, porcelain toilet, and the bedroom. This is very cool. The MH in the name of the museum, oddly enough, actually stands for manufactured housing. You would think motorhome or mobile home would be more appropriate, but no, 
It is manufactured housing and that's actually the section we're in right now. So I can see why it stands for manufactured housing. This one looks and smells like the 1980s. And we even have a double cassette boombox to prove it. I used to have one of those. Here we have a small bedroom for a child, perhaps. Ooh, nice bathroom. And here's the main bedroom. Here we have another one, perhaps from the 1990s. Very nice bedroom with a desk, half bath. I also used to have a similar record player. Here's the bedroom. Here we have a snowmobile, built in Elkhart as well. This is the kind of cottage you might find at a current RV resort, very modern. Which is not what we came here, we want to see the old stuff, so let's continue. Since it is open house, they have moved all the vintage RVs to a smaller warehouse, not their usual display area, so this is not going to be the best experience, I don't think. Still super cool to see. This trailer here is the oldest in the world, a 1913 Earl travel trailer. It was towed by a Model T. Simple, but effective. Definitely a step up from a tent, which was probably the whole purpose at the time. And here we have a 1916s telescopic apartment. An early slide out, if you will. It even had a shower heated by the radiator. Now that's what I call innovation. And here we have a 1931 model AA Ford house car. Not many safety features at the time, I see. And unfortunately, in this setting, some of these RVs are pretty dark inside. An early 1916 cozy tent camper. And here's a 1928 Pierce Arrow house car. Yeah, they're still called house cars at this point. I wonder when the term motorhome was adopted. Here's the 1931 house car belonging to actress Mae West. More like an oversized limo. And here's one of less than 50 remaining Baulus Road Chiefs built by the famous sailplane builder and the precursor to the modern Airstream. I wish we could walk inside some of this. A 1922 Zegelmeyer camp trailer. These tents on wheels are getting better with more hard surfaces and all that. And let's see this other motorhome here. Some of these look like a precursor to the schoolie. Got a bus and build it inside. Ooh, there's even a toilet. Now we're talking. Looking through the window, there's a dinette, but I don't see a sign with the year and model, but I'm going to guess early 40s. What do you guys think? A 1936 road home coach. It is a little bit dark inside, but I see a toilet, which looks kind of modern. Definitely not 1930s. I can't barely see it, but overall, not a bad layout. This almost looks like an old Citroën, but it is a house car from 1937, belonging to filmmaker Roy Hunt, cinematographer and producer. It is very unique. I guess these vehicles would be perfect to go on location and still have some amenities. Kind of like the way they do it nowadays, but I'm sure the new ones are much more luxurious. Here's a homemade trailer camper. And these usually have lights on when they are in the regular display area. That's why I'm so bummed out we came during open house. I will share a link somewhere to our 2016 video. Fortunately, because of the open house, this seems to be like more like a temporary exhibition. I don't know if they have all of the units that they normally have on display, but... 1954 Holiday Rambler. This is one manufacturer that's still around. I guess the closer we get to present day, the more familiar things will look. Not bad. We have a closet. Still, none of this will have a bathroom. 
The Elkhart Open House, by the way, is this dealer's only RV show, where manufacturers show their prototypes and newest models, so the dealers know what to purchase the following year, so that's why we are in the dark. Here we have a 1958 22-foot Airstream, actually very similar to the current iconic aluminum construction. Gas heater, refrigerator, stove, pressurized water, all the bells and whistles. And here's a tiny one called the Little Prince. The 1964 Clark Cortez was the first front-wheel drive motorhome. And here's a timeless classic, when Winnebago built the first affordable motorhome. 1969 chassis mounted truck camper which eventually became the now common Class C motorhome. Let's take a look inside. What they did, basically, they removed the bed of the truck and built a house right on the chassis, like Class C. And here's a road trek, which coincidentally is celebrating 50 years as of 2024. They are responsible for popularizing the camper van. A 1978 Coachman Leprechaun. Ooh, look at those windows. Here's the Star Trek II, built out of a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado with an Oldsmobile Tornado engine. Here's the body of an old GMC motorhome, but all modernized inside. I really love these GMCs. It's so dark. Let me see if my phone can do a better job. Let's take a look at the original, the OG 1974 GMC motorhome. These were way ahead of their time. Produced from 1973 to 1978, front-wheel drive, air suspension. I kind of wish car companies still built motorhomes. Huge panoramic windows, sofa, dinette, the doghouse to access the engine. And is that an 8-track I see? Back it is a little dark, but there's the fridge and the galley. This area here in the back, I suppose, would turn into a bed. Oh, here's the wet bath. No wonder they're keeping it dark. I don't think this one is restored at all. This may be the most famous schoolie of them all. This is the Bluebird, Mark and Trish, and Caleb of Keep Your Daydream took on Route 66 a few years ago. It is very dark in here, so let me grab my phone. I'm surprised how original they kept it. I mean, I would have been tempted to rip the carpet off and change some of the decor, but then again, it would have never ended up at the RV Hall of Fame. They did add a pretty large battery bank and inverters, you know, some of the high-tech stuff we need. Nope, no lights. Check out the breaker box, it almost looks residential. And what is this? Oh, just another closet. Let's check out the galley. at that panel, original. I love looking at vintage stuff like this, I mean mostly original, not all of it, but it is a good compromise, modernizing the essentials but keeping the old look, especially if it works. I think we're gonna end it here. What is this? A NASA SpaceX exhibit?
Could it be part of open house? Let's see. I mean, the amount of RVers who have been using Starlink lately is staggering. I would venture to say more than half of the RVs I see out there have a dishy up on the roof. Oh, I think I know what this is. Elon is working on some kind of modular home. This must be it. Here we have a modern diesel pusher, so let's check it out. Okay. So modern. Of course, this is basically a commercial for Furion products. Of course, everything is Furion in here because they're the ones. Oh, nice Furion TV. Could be dangerous. That's the, the second floor there. I don't know if I like the colors, but got a roof mirror where have I seen that before okay one more vintage setup here before we go since this one is displayed properly and nicely lit up here's a model of an RV manufacturing plant well, we saw the real thing you saw the real thing at Winnebago that summer, so yeah, that's pretty much how it looks. And that was it. If there's one piece of advice I can give you, do not come to the uh, RV Hall of Fame in late September here, because they're doing the big open house uh, show, and uh, all the vintage RVs are crammed into this warehouse that doesn't have very good lighting, and uh, it's not the best experience. And uh, other than that, I would have bought a t-shirt, but they didn't have my size. Um, but we still have two more hours to kill, so let's see what uh, we can do here in town. Actually, I got a call, and Minitini 4 is ready for pickup, so here we are. Well, good morning from Indiana. We're about, uh, I don't know, about 70 miles uh, north of Louisville here. And uh, yeah, I didn't film all that much at the mothership. Uh, we got some repairs done in Minitini 4, you know, mostly stuff that we had broken in Alaska. Now, the journey continues, we're heading south. We're gonna drive through Louisville, Lexington, eventually, at some point later today, we'll make it uh, to Knoxville, then Asheville, and eventually Orangeburg, uh, South Carolina, where we're gonna do a- Head north toward North Executive Drive. An oil change on Starship here. And they're finally gonna put that module that shorted out where we were in Alaska. So we'll finally gonna have a, you know, trailer lights gonna be able to drive at night again. So it's gonna be mostly a driving day, four or five hours, and um, I'll enjoy the ride. Let me tell you something. I would love to linger for a couple of weeks and experience fall. The leaves are starting to turn here in Indiana too, but we must go home. And home is south where the leaves are still green, where the leaves are always green. We're about to cross the Ohio River onto Louisville, Kentucky. Approaching the foothills of the Appalachians. Pretty soon we'll be in Tennessee. There's supposed to be downtown parking in downtown Knoxville, so we're gonna try that first. And since we've never been there, maybe we can explore a little this afternoon. The 
aforementioned RV park is supposed to be located at the Knoxville Auditorium and Coliseum, but there's not a whole lot of information online, so we don't know what to expect. It is always a little nerve-wracking driving into downtown with the trailer in tow, but sometimes you gotta do it. You just have to be aware of what you're towing behind, make wider turns, and being short certainly helps. Well, this seems to be it, but it is full. There's a game or some kind of event going on. Once again, we need a plan B. Actually, we're going to continue down to Sevierville. There are a few campgrounds there, although it is a super touristy area. Here we are, and there's a brand new Bucky's here. Huge, and super busy, so we're gonna skip it for now. On the other hand, we found a campground called Dumpling Valley Farm RV Park. And let's see what it looks like. A part of us feels like going into Gatlinburg for some nocturnal fun, but it is not the time. This was certainly not part of the plan. I mean, today nothing was part of the plan. <laughs> uh, I don't even know the name of this place. I'll, I'll, I'll write it down somewhere. But it's like a farm. We're just outside Sevierville, uh, Tennessee. And the plan was to park at this parking lot. In, uh, we, we even have cows back there. Uh, the, the plan was to park at this parking lot in downtown uh, Knoxville. We've never been to Knoxville, but um, but the parking lot was full, it was like for seasonal. Uh, it's, it's like the it's a RV parking, but it's part of the, the arena there, the, the community, I forget the name, I'm tired. But we're only an hour and a half away from our next destination, which is, which is Asheville. And we are going to spend the whole day in Asheville. But this is super nice. Want to relax? Wanna well, better fixed our microwave so we can make pizza now. Our, our convection microwave. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna do anything in this area. I'm super tempted to unhitch and go into Sevierville or Pigeon Forge or even Gatlinburg, but we're not gonna do it. It is a brand new day. This was a pretty nice campground. We might return here someday. Actually, let's stop by Bucky's. This one is one of the newest and largest ones. Perhaps this was a bad idea. Uh, this was definitely a bad idea. Some of these new destination buckies are impossible. Needless to say, we're not going inside. I pulled in as far forward as I could, so not to block traffic. Good thing our trailer is short. Well, buckies is becoming a little more of a challenge these days being so busy, but gas at 305, you kind of have to take advantage of that. We'll see how we get out of here because in Bucky's, people had the tendency of just parking their vehicles at the pump and going inside. Very disconsiderate. There they are, taking forever. And I'm like, hold my beer. Well, we began this trip by going to Asheville, visiting our friends from Waynesville. And that's kind of how we're going to end it. 
and we've been there before, so no, we're not doing the build more. They don't want you to film inside anyway, or the Blue Ridge Parkway for that matter, or anything like that. We're just going to see some of the things we missed in our previous visits, like the Grove Park Inn being one of them, a tapas restaurant called Curate, and we may stumble upon a weekend festival, but I'm going to save all that and the return trip home for the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Riding